Rob Ellis, are you on? Oh, there he is. I am indeed. Paul yeah. Ryan, are, are you connected, Paul? Yep. Then I'm ready to go public. So he's ready. You can go ahead anytime you'd like, Dean. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me welcome you to our regular meeting. It is, of course, by teams, and uh, the agenda is with uh, the packages. Uh, let me start by saying it is a from a bit, but the weather forecasts are for something a little more amenable to fall enjoyment in the next week. So today, today's the rough one. Uh, we have an agenda, so I'll open the meeting and uh, I'll call it to order. And we're going to look at the agenda. There's a few things that I will say before we get started. Uh, uh, Rob, you be wanting to talk about the hydrologist report. I'll give you an update on uh, on the on McElhaney. We can add that as item in camera. That will be item K2. K2. Question, Mr. Chair. Yes. Why is it in camera? Because it's not a report. It's an update for council. Okay, so I actually, uh, okay. Um, I had a question in there on our business arising from the minutes on when the report was going to be provided to council. I'd like that recorded on the record because it's, it wasn't from the last one and I'm fine. Um, I can do it with requires of administration. I can ask you then when we can expect you can to see the report. right now, Paul. Uh, OK, when we expect to receive the report. We're hoping to receive it this month. There was a delay because of extra piezometer information on groundwater wells. And so that was completed on the 31st of August. So we are waiting for an interim report to be presented by McElhaney. And that's for the next council meeting. Is that when you're expecting it? I certainly hope it will be ready for that next council meeting. Right, thank you. Many delays. Thank you. That satisfies my concern. Okay. Uh, uh, the next one is is that I need an in-camera item. It's uh, with regress, regards to uh, Mount uh, Stewart, Charles Stewart, and the naming. And the reason it's in camera is because it involves other agencies and government. So, which name do we give it here in the in-camera one? It's uh, Mount uh, Charles Stewart. <laughs> Yes, that is, I believe, the actual name. Yeah. OK. Uh, anything else, uh, Rob, from your administrative end? Yes, under D, business arising from the minutes, I'd like to add number D2, illegal disposal of recyclable materials. That was a question asked by Deputy Reeve Clark at the last meeting. OK. I thought I saw a memo on that, Robert, but it's a good place to put it. Uh, and item H2. H2. That's the development permit application. You would have seen that I sent there was a letter submitted very late in the day on Friday. In regards to that, council can make the decision whether or not they wish to receive it as information or not receive it at all. But that will come up on item H2. There was a letter from an adjacent neighbor. People were contacted by the uh, owners of the Ghost River Retreat, uh, Ghost Crossing, I should say. And this uh, came in late. And so we added it to the package. You get received a copy. And it's up to council if they wish to receive it or not. Um, there is not a public hearing scheduled as part of a recommendation, but uh, council can make that decision um, when the item becomes before you later on today. I have a process question, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Robert, but there was actually a public hearing on the Ghost River Crossings application. Yes, there was. And that was an opportunity for people to provide submissions. Yes, it was. So, um, and this is a submission with respect to that application? No, it's, it's, it's in respect to the development permit. Okay. So it is, a, it is a separate process, Councilor Ryan. Yes, okay, I agree. It's a, a very good question and a very good answer. Well, thank you. 
Well, I am concerned, Mr. Chair, that it could be perceived by some as being a runaround, like as in going around the process to try a last minute thing. That's the only concern I have. Yeah. All right. There may be some questions from Council with regards to staff returning uh, to their office locations or with regards to the uh, uh, wildfire at uh, Black uh, Rock Mountain. Uh, we can do that in the questions of administration. I think. Yeah. Or you can or do, do under the CAO's report. I do have a note about the staff returning on that point too. OK. <laughs> Anything else now going around council? Uh, I just. Can I just go back a little bit, Mr. Chair, to that uh, other piece? I'm just scrolling through my emails from Friday, Mr. Ellis, and I don't see that email transferred from you. Yeah, it was sent out to all of council on uh, on Friday. And it I, came from your email? It came from my email, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Paul Clark, anything to uh, add to the agenda? No, thanks, I'm good. Eric Butters. None. Lisa Rosshold. No, thank you. Paul Ryan. No. We have an amended agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? I'll move it. OK, I have it from Lisa. Paul I think you beat everybody up with hands. I'll take it from oh. Lisa. OK. <laughs> uh, good, good morning, morning, Lisa. You're live and awake. <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> Your name's now in the minutes. <laughs> I'm going to call the question now. Calling a question to, to approve the minutes. All in favor? One, Eric's hands up. Paul's hands up. Paul's hands up. Lisa's hands up. My hands up. That's unanimous. Moving forward. Previous minutes. August 11th. Regular meeting of council. Any errors, omissions, or deletions? I'm not here. Motion to anything. approve. I have the motion to approve as presented from Paul Clark. Discussion is still open. I'm not hearing any. Calling the question. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. We've got five in favor. Next, uh, we have uh, minutes previously circulated. And Paul, this is usually yours. Sure, I'll uh, move that council acknowledge it. Different circulated, Mr. Chair. Okay. So that's for B2. Uh, discussion? Calling the question, all in favor? Round the table, Paul Clark, yes. Lisa? Yep, okay, and Paul Ryan? Yep, okay. So that's uh, carried as well. Councillor reports, are we continuing with them or omitting them, please? Council's pleasure? I do not have one prepared, so... Uh... <laughs> I guess further to our previous council meeting that uh, we've turned virtual, we've been skipping over that. So. Yes, we will be face to face, I think, soon enough. And but uh, if there's something burning, uh, not not the forest fire, <laughs> uh, we could talk about it. Uh, Paul or Eric, anything to add to councillor remarks? Uh, no, I, I don't see any reason to have it. Okay, Paul Clark. Nothing. Thanks. Paul Ryan. No, sir. OK, moving on to business arising from the minutes. We have two items. D1 is the first one. It is the page six in your handout, and it is DevCon landscaping bullback. Anything to add, uh, Rob? No, I think that the, uh, the memo prepared by Ms. Tuck is, uh, is fine. OK, question. Yes, Paul. So uh, I guess there's been a bit of correspondence back and forth about the amount of uh, grass that actually grew from that hydro seeding. Uh, and so uh, will we be holding this back until they <clears throat> correct that? Because we're into September now. So if they haven't gone in and reseeded it and watered it, uh, it doesn't appear it's going to happen in 2020. Now we still have a, a warranty on it. Uh, Councillor Ryan, so we still have the hold back in place. So until that's completed, we won't be given the hold back return. The hold back will not be returned. 
Okay, so then my understanding is that the whole the whole back will sit there until the warranty period has expired. That is correct. Correct. Thank you. Great. Okay, uh, that's number one. Uh, is it require a, a motion or is it as information? I think it's as information. We should have a motion to receive as information, Rob. Would I you will. agree with that? Yes, I will. Okay. I have it from Paul Clark, uh, Paul Ryan. Yeah, uh, and uh, make sure, if we can, Mr. Chair, that it's recorded in our minutes that there was a discussion that the holdback will not be released until the warranty period has been satisfied. Did you capture that, uh, Linda? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, Calling question all in favor. One, two, three, four, five. Carried. Now that we're mo moving to page eight, folks. And. Uh, Oh, oh through the chair. No, you have yeah, a couple we, more there. No, still we have D two. Do D two. I got one more. So that's yeah. recyclables. Is that yours, Rob? Yes, that was the question that was asked at the last meeting by Deputy Reeve Clark about illegal disposal of recyclables that was noted in the bylaw services report. Uh, in the month of July, there were thirteen concerns um, entered under waste control bylaw. Nine were specifically concerning recyclable materials. The concerns came from one of our staff members. And it's about involving cardboard with shipping labels or packing slips identifying who may have uh, disposed of the cardboard. Uh, it appears people are having more items delivered, obviously, because of the COVID. And for that reason, um, the, for whatever reason, the cardboard is not making it into the proper container. So it's becoming a, an issue with the recyclables. Bio officers are unable to lay a charge as there is no witnesses to prove the person receiving the packages uh, actually disposed of the materials. So instead, uh, using the shipping labels and slips, they, these people have received warning letters from bylaw services. Uh, we did have an issue with uh, not, not involving recyclable materials, but a concern about uh, waste accumulating around a garbage bin. Uh, there was witnesses for that occasion, and so a violation ticket was issued. This is continued to be an ongoing issue but without witnesses. So we're doing our best to just get warning letters right now for the recyclable concerns. Okay, Lisa. Um, uh, Rob, excuse well, me, on, Lisa. Chairman. Uh, uh, Lisa, oh. first. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Rob, thanks for that. Um, I'm just curious, you had said the cardboard was put into the wrong bin. Does that mean it was put into the wrong recycling bin or the it was put in the garbage bin? It was put into the wrong bin. The wrong so recycling it bin? Up in, it could have been in, I didn't read the, the in detail. It could just ended up in garbage. Oh. But they did have the packing slips and labels, so they were able to identify where it came from, but not exactly who put it in there. Okay. I didn't know um, putting it in the wrong recycling bin was illegal, but... Um, I understand if it was in the wrong garbage, if it was in the garbage bin, but. Like I said, I don't know which bin it was being put into. Okay. But not the proper one. Can I move on, Lisa? Yeah, I, I guess I, I'm concerned that it, I don't actually think it's illegal to put cardboard in the wrong recycling bin. <laughs> uh, when we're using the word illegal disposal of recyclables. Um, so through the chair, it's under the waste control bylaw. I can send you a copy if you'd like. I can clarify, Mr. Chair. How, how would you clarify? Is that the original <clears throat> report came in is that there were recyclable materials being put in the garbage bins. It's in Doug uh, Mar Marischuk's, uh report. Right. Recyclable materials in the garbage bins, not recyclable materials in the wrong recycling bin. Okay, thank you. Okay. Paul Clark. Um, yes, um, this is the first time, Rob, I've heard of a ticket being issued for people illegally dumping uh, non-recyclable materials. Um, and uh, just interested uh, to have a little more information around that, how they it's a constant problem, I know, but how was the uh, person fined uh, and and how did they how did someone know uh, that was happening? Well, we received the complaint. 
the action taken, as you noticed in the what I had sent to you on the weekend, action was verbal first. We read it again, then a written warning was provided, and then a violation ticket was uh, was issued. Okay. Yes, I saw that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? We should have a motion to receive a re verbal report. Is that correct? Sure, I'll make it. Okay. Please note, uh, Linda, that it's a verbal report. Uh, any further discussion? Call any question. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. We're now on page eight, by my reckoning. This takes us to the third reading of proposed bylaw 09 dash Z backslash 20. Whose is this? This looks like Jared's. Yes, that's correct. Good morning. Want to introduce it? Okay. Um, so this is third reading for the proposed bylaw as a revindicated uh, 09 dash Z slash 20. Uh, second reading for this bylaw was approved by council on August 11th uh, council meeting. Um, the red line version of the proposed amendments can be seen in attachment two, and the proposed bylaw is uh, attached as number one with the amendments contained within the bylaw itself. Um, I have previously um, summarized the amendments uh, in previous readings, so I don't think I need to do that today unless there's any questions. Um, if not, then that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Questions of administration? Any questions of administration? I've, I've uh, asked uh, the questions I've had for this over the last two council meetings, so thank you. And have you gotten your answers? To yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So uh, this has been a long haul, and the recommendation is to give third reading. I have it from er uh, Eric, third reading. Discussion, not hearing any, calling the question, all in favor. One, two, three, four, and five. Third reading has been achieved. Thank you for your persistence on this file, Jared, and your patience. And it is very important to get the wording correct in our land bylaws. And so it's a, a work that has high value. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, going on in the agenda to the next item of business, which is one, page 42. Okay, so uh, these are councillor expenses, and as it turns out, it's all mine. Uh, it took me uh, quite a while to get caught up to getting this file in. You might notice that there are three uh, RMA conferences in one day, or three three in one day. One was a conf an RMA con conference with the RMA executive. The second one was an RMA conference with the central uh, RMA district, two very different meetings, both of which required separate preparation. And the third one was a government of Alberta announcement through Premier Kenny with regards to infrastructure. I'm prepared to uh, answer any questions beyond that, but that might have stood out as exceptional, and it is. I don't have a problem, Mr. Chair. I'll move it. Move council approved. Okay, the motion is on the floor and discussion is available. <clears throat> Calling the question, all in favor? Opposed? None. I don't see any opposed. I couldn't see your hand, Lisa, but I took it as acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes were speaking to me. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much, folks. That's uh, 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 appreciated. Taking a look at uh, H2 now. Development permit at the Ghost Crossing. This is for council to approve. And Jenny, I believe this is your report. And would you like to speak to it? Bye-bye. Yes. See you, uh, Eric. Uh, let the minutes uh, show that Eric has, Councillor Eric has uh, vacated for the uh, for this item of business, and we'll return after it.
because he uh, has declared uh, conflict uh, uh, through the whole process. Thank you. Uh, Jenny, please explain your report. Hello? No, I can't hear you. You have no sound, Jenny. Jenny, IT is on the way to you. Okay. So while we're waiting there, Leslie, I don't see an invitation for the in-camera section of today's meeting. I look back through the calendar. I don't see it. That will not come from me. That will come from Robert. I'll be preparing that, Paul. Okay. Because uh, there isn't one in my calendar. And that's where it would, oh. that's where it would reside. Because everybody's going to need one to chime into that in about 15 minutes. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the old movies. <laughs> Now we got to go for black and white. Yeah. Isn't, aren't we supposed to have like a musical interlude when this happens? Uh, oh, there's Jenny. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Jenny. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Lana saved the day. <laughs> Again. Um, <laughs> Um, perfect. So this uh, this report is for um, development permit application 4920, uh, which is the crossing at Ghost River. Um, what I'm going to do is refer you to your development officer's report, which is attached in the council package, and I'll give some of the background. Um, so the report, um, the application was submitted by the crossing at Ghost River. Uh, the subject property is within the direct control for district. Um, and the application is for visitor accommodation use for 15 of the 27 existing guest rooms. Um, 39.8.5 of the land use bylaw uh, states that council has discretion on all discretionary uses within the DC4 district. So that's why it's before you today, uh, because it is a discretionary use. Um, so the, the crossing is an existing retreat and event facility, and you'll be familiar with this because the landowners recently applied to the MD to amend the DC4 district, um, and that obtained third reading of council on July 14th of this year. Uh, so one of the approved amendments was adding visitor accommodation to the district, and this application is for, um, for visitor, visitor accommodation use. Um, I just wanted to note that the application does not propose any buildings or additions to the guest rooms. It will be using the existing um, 15 rooms of 27 in the Deer House and the Remington House. Um, and Schedule A, which is attached, um, outlines the locations of those houses. Um, a public hearing for bylaw 05Z20, which were the amendments to the DC4 district, was held on June 24th of 2020. Um, there were several concerns raised, um, and under section 3985 of the land use bylaw, um, council may hold a public hearing for any discretionary uses that it has before them. Um, because we had just held a public hearing, administration is recommending um, a decision on this development permit application. However, um, it is council's discretion if they choose to hold an additional public hearing for this development permit application. Um, landowner notification um, has occurred in accordance with our land use bylaws. So for any discretionary use application that we receive, um, for any development permit, um, we require the applicant to notify their adjacent landowners. So um, as Mr. Ellis referred to, we did receive one submission, which was the letter submitted on Friday, last Friday. Um, and that was um, as a result of the landowner notification for the development permit. Um, uh, section 3971 of the DC district requires that the first development permit be issued for um, no more than two years. So that's reflected in the proposed conditions. 
Um, and then following that, they could get a permit for up to five years. Um, all of the background information is attached. Um, and staff recommendation is that council approve development permit application 4920 for visitor accommodation use for 15 um, rooms on site. Uh, the question has come up uh, during council discussion with regards to the letter that was sent to this file. And uh, I'm wondering if all councillors now have received that uh, uh, email and have read it. I would give you all a time to read it if you have it before you. I have looked, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, at uh, two of my electronic devices here for that email, and I cannot find it from Robert. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, you know, council has protocols and we have rules regarding submissions to council, things to be added to agendas. Uh, certainly that coming in on Friday would have come in past the deadline. Uh, yes. So I would be inclined not to consider it anyway. The, uh, the deadline might not have been uh, uh, publicly uh, announced. It certainly is, Mr. Chair, in our procedural bylaw, and everybody knows 10 days before the council meeting. So anyway, uh, that's just my position on it, so I, I would not consider it personally. Okay. And uh, uh, are there any other councillors that do not have not read that email? Okay, that's fine. I have read it. Yeah, it's not a long one, so it's uh, that, that's easy. Uh, I want to go on, however, to the discussion of the matter. And uh, there are several alternatives to you and a recommendation. The recommendation is to approve. Does anyone want to speak to the uh, uh, staff recommendation or to any of the alternatives? I'll move staff recommendation, Mr. Chair, if that's what you're looking for. Yep, that that moves it along. The okay. uh, motion is on the floor for staff rec. Now is still open for discussion, please. Elisa. Oh, I can't hear you, Lisa. Your mic's not on. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll figure this out. <laughs> um. Under staff recommendation number seven, it uh, mentions the visitor accommodation use shall not interfere with the rights of other residents to quiet enjoyment of their neighborhood and shall be incidental or sub and subordinate use to the principal retreat use. Um, how, how do we measure that? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, I thought... I thought we had put in wording shall not unduly interfere with the rights because they're uh, sorry it didn't translate to this um, this version of number seven but it is hard to measure um, regardless of whether it's unduly or shall not interfere um, it's something that we want we want the crossing to be able to mitigate concerns from neighbors um, we don't want there to be there are some items in the district like no music festivals, restrictions on outdoor music that will help with this. Um, but it is difficult. If we think it's a condition that shouldn't be in there or that's not easily enforceable, we can definitely take that out. Let's, I'm not sure if Lisa has an uh, ongoing question. Lisa? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if we should take it out. Like, I certainly uh, think that um, making uh, uh, a recommendation to uh, limit the amount of uh, loud noise coming from the retreat, uh, I think that's a good idea. But I just, I guess, um, knowing how, how to measure that is uh, where I have the issue. So Rob, I think you're co coming into Lisa's comment. Yes, if we go to number seven, as Jenny's pointed out, I think you could very easily um, correct that by just saying visitor accommodation use um, shall be incidental and subordinate to the principal retreat use. Because if you go to number eight, the operator is compelled to uh, address complaints that are made by area residents or adjacent neighbors. So are you making that uh, change now, Rob? 
Okay. Well, council's chance to make that. Afterwards. Okay. After the discussion. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chair, change, changes Brian. to it now would have to changes to it now would have to be done by council, not by administration. Um, but I was going to the same point, and it's easy to clarify. Um, I actually had a couple of extra words that Robert had. So visitor accommodation is incidental and subordinate uh, to the main use and shall not unduly interfere. And because uh, interfering with someone's rights is in quiet and quiet enjoyment is entirely subjective. Uh, and I am very aware in some places where people get very upset about wind chimes and are constantly writing letters of complaint about wind chimes. But is that an undue interference with the peaceful enjoyment of your property? So, so my suggestion, Mr. Chair, and I'll make the who moved it? I moved it. So maybe Lisa brought up, maybe she wants to amend it and just say visitor accommodation is incidental uh, and subordinate to the principal use and shall not unduly interfere. I think that catches them both. I'm looking for administration to. And shall not unduly interfere, period. Both of them. Uh, no, and shall not unduly interfere with the rights of other residents. Okay. I okay. would support those that uh, amendment. Okay, you're ma you actually are making the amendment, and uh, Paul Ryan's considering it to be friendly. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, Paul Clark. Hello, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, am I on? Okay. Yes, you're on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um. Well, I think it covers my concern. Uh, is that. Uh, if there is any um, complaints or problems that arise, then uh, um, the uh, owner has a uh, an obligation to resolve those complaints or problems. Is that correct? Yes. It is. It is correct. I can't hear any administration saying so. Correct. Yes, number eight addresses the um, complaints or problem or problems that arise being mitigated by the um, the owner. Okay, so I have an, uh, okay. an amendment before me, which is uh, Lisa's amendment. We should vote on it first, then we should vote on the main. It's, motion. A, friend, it's oh. a friendly amendment, so it doesn't require um, an amending uh, motion or a vote on an amending motion. If I consider it as the main mover, the mover of the main motion to be friendly, it doesn't require a vote. One, one step. So moving the amended a motion or a motion, and uh, uh, I'm going to call the question. Paul, you have your hand up still. Clark. Paul Clark. Oh, oh he's, he's taking his call. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this. He's going to be on the phone for as much as 10 minutes. Well, if he doesn't vote, he doesn't vote. Yeah. Well, if he's going to be on the call for 10 minutes, Mr. Chair, he should perhaps uh, actually just uh, advise administration that he's not available for this portion of the meeting and be noted in the minutes as being out. did earlier advise uh, us of that, but no. Oh, I didn't hear it during the council meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah, it might not have been during the council meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call the question if there's no. Uh, Mr. Chair, just yeah. for. Uh, order, if nothing else, if Councillor Clark is not voting on this because he is absent, the Municipal Government Act requires him to vote on this unless he is absent. So I think the minutes should record that he left the meeting at 9.32. He has, I have that. he's on the phone, he's got his mic turned off and he's not responding to anything we're saying. So uh, I think he's left the meeting. So we'll this record him present. as being absent from the meeting. We will have Linda record him as having absent in the meeting to take a phone call. Okay. And uh, we're now going to call a question. All in favor? One, two, three. Maybe three a three. stick for Mr. Chair, but six or eight months from now, nobody will remember, but the minutes will remember. <laughs> well, with age, that becomes more and more a problem. So. <laughs> Do you want me to rephrase that to six to eight minutes from now? <laughs> or, or, uh, <laughs> brief and passing moment, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Jenny, for uh, you. carrying that forward. Thank you, Council, for uh, uh, amendments that I think uh, serve the interests of the public. And uh, uh, Rob, for 
having your administration carrying it through for many months. But we're there. Uh, can we take a short break to get Mr. Butters back? I think if we can. Mm -hmm. Let's take a five minute break and see if we can get uh, everybody back. Yeah. So it is what now? Who's got a time? 9.34. Yeah, 9.34. So we're going to at uh, uh, nine, uh, 9.40 we will reconvene.
Anna? Yes. Okay. Are we ready to go? Anytime you are, Reeve Cooper. Okay. I'm going to reconvene the meeting. And we're back to order. As uh, I've got it, we have moved into H3. Am I correct? You are correct. Okay. So that's page 74. This is the bulk of this uh, uh, package. Much of the information is not new to you. Bill, I believe this is your uh, package. Have I got Bill Luca? You do not have Bill Luca. He is on holidays. What? We do. Ha we have tr been trying to do that for people lately. <laughs> it, it helps. Uh, who's taking that one? Yourself, Rob? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, the recommendation is that council authorize the men to finalize a letter of endorsement to Alberta Transportation regarding the Dead Man's Flats Interchange Functional Planning Study. If Council would turn please to page 226, that is attachment three that uh, Mr. Luca has noted in his decision report. And that is a letter um, that he wishes to send to uh, Mr. Jerry Lau, Alberta Transportation. Amends been participating as a stakeholder following Alberta Transportation's consultation process for the past several years, and that is for the Dead Man's Flats Interchange Functional Planning Study. The study addresses upgrades to Highway 1 to Dead Man's Flats, which will be necessary to accommodate traffic from future development within the town of Canmore. Principally, that will be the Three Sisters development. Uh, the consultation process is now complete. The study has been finalized. You can see that's attachment number one. Alberta Transportation is requesting formal endorsement from the MD, and that'll be referenced as Schedule 2. Sorry, that's number three. Um, the MD, uh, sorry, the Town of Camwars also received the same request from Alberta Transportation. As I said, Bill has put together a letter uh, with some of his uh, concerns and so forth, things they should, uh, Alberta Transportation is to stay aware of. So we just need to have direction from, admit, from Council to give administration direction to authorize uh, the sending up the letter to Alberta Transportation. To be clear, Rob, whose uh, uh, signature and uh, office will be at the bottom of the page? Yes, that will be for my signature. Okay, thank you. Council, have you got questions? Lisa? You're muted. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, okay, where was I? <laughs> so I I do like the the letter and the tone of the letter. Um, I agree with the, the sentiment that uh, uh, we're uh, we are like we can accept the planning study, but there are some uh, deficiencies that we feel like haven't been considered. Mm -hmm. um, there's one sentence that I, and I'm not too sure I understand what it means um, in the second to last paragraph it says the resulting impacts have not been addressed by the planning study and would become the responsibility of the MD um, with that sentence are we inviting that to be the responsibility of the MD or are we discouraging that to be the responsibility of the MD discouraging it so it's not becomes our responsibility I think that sentence needs to be a little bit more clear. I, I was going to suggest that you replace the word would with the two words should not. I think that would that's work. Totally, that's totally acceptable. That's a good catch. Yes. Um, and then another, uh, another um, addition I think we should have is um, like we start this letter saying request further to your letter dated August 12th requesting the MD of Bighorn's endorsement of Holly 1. Um, as you read through the rest of the letter, it doesn't necessarily feel as though we're endorsing this. So I don't know if that in the last paragraph we should be uh, 
clearly stating, therefore, we do not endorse this plan, or therefore, we do not endorse the entirety of this plan. That's uh, exactly the wording to use. Therefore, we do not endorse the entirety of this plan. Yes. Because uh, it, it, it's, I understand um, where this letter is coming from, but uh, the firm position is wavering a little bit. Uh, Councilor Roswell, where would you like to have the uh, that uh, entered into the letter? Um, Very, it becomes the last paragraph. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there could be more added there. Like, therefore, um, I'm not sure what else we could add here, but you, just, you could just write it up in closing. The MD uh, supports yeah. the majority of the plan. However, given the uh, issues identified above, we cannot co give complete endorsement or something like that and refer back to it. Yeah, that sounds good to me. This is a letter that's going to get pulled out of a file five to 10 years from now. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think it, it's important that we be very clear that uh, Cannot endorse as currently yeah. proposed, something like that. Rob, have you captured it? I have, yes. That's, that's an excellent catch. Thank you. So we're... Uh, we are offering a conditional endorsement or an incomplete endorsement. I would say uh, conditional. Oh, conditional. <laughs> okay. Not unconditional. <laughs> Did we, what are our conditions then? Uh, everything that we've mentioned that is unsatisfactory. What you've pointed out, Lisa, is very, very important. I believe that their plan has a lot to do with visitors and the traveling public on the Trans-Canada Highway, a lot to do on the new development that might or will or uh, almost certainly will occur in Three Sisters, but not so much of an advantage for our residents. Mm -hmm. some, 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 uh, there seems to be a cost to our residents, indeed. Yeah, I agree. Um, something else that I... It's a, a huge document, but I I didn't find it in the document was um, during the construction. I don't know how that will impact the community and for how long. Um, like, will the old ramp and uh, interchange still be accessible while they're building a new one? Or how will that yeah, you'll have to be one of the last things I believe that comes down. Bill have, would have a better answer to that, but uh, they would have to keep that access going until they finally removed it and the new uh, new ramp was opened up. Okay. But I can uh, make the motion for staff rec with those amendments to the letter. I would like you to do that. It's recognized. Discussion? All in the question, all in favor? One, two, three, four, four of five. Actually, uh, uh, Councillor Clark is still not present in the meeting. Uh, where are we at now? We are at, at inquiries <coughs> and administration. So uh, going around the room, have we got inquiries of administration? We'll start with uh, Eric. Have you got anything to bring up with regards to the fire, Eric? Uh, no, uh, not. I mean, I haven't seen a recent update. Uh, I'm sure the uh, weather conditions have helped tremendously, and uh, I see that uh, right at the moment. Actually, I'm hearing a helicopter going by, which means it's not on the fire. It's just doing patrol. So, uh, best of my knowledge, it's uh, well under control. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Paul Ryan, anything to bring forward 
uh, requires of administration. Uh, just one question of uh, Mr. Ellison. I, I know Mr. Ellison, uh, the Director of Flood Recovery, uh, we're meeting with the Exxon Community Association with regards to work to be done south of the 1A Highway and that there was some sort of response to come back from the Community Association. I just want to inquire, Mr. Ellis, have you received that communication? I have not, Councillor Ryan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Lisa? Um, yeah, I've got uh, two different inquiries. Um, I would like to be briefed on the process, policy, and timeline with regards to the DMFCA recreation grounds proposal that has been submitted. Um, the committee working on this has high hopes to submit grant applications uh, that will be due this January. Um, how can admin help them reach this goal uh, and within this time frame? Um, and further to that, uh, I would like some clarification to know if there is any conflict between the proposed location and size uh, with regards to the land swap. And I have one more after that. And this, uh, this one might be able to uh, be answered right away, but I'm just uh, hoping uh, that all committee and board meetings are now getting back on schedule and uh, the monthly or, or quarterly uh, rotation, however it may be, uh, is getting back on track. I make that four questions. <laughs> it's not, I'm not. I'm not saying you can have a fifth if you want, but have I got all four? Oh yeah, I only had three. Only had three. <laughs> okay, I can get to. I did send correspondence to the DMF, which you were copied on, but I'm happy to give you a, a separate report on that. That's fine. Thank you. And can you provide that, Robert, to all of council? It will go to all of council. Perfect, thank you. I'm back on, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, I had to leave the meeting for a phone call. Uh, yes, you indicated that would happen, and we were happy to accommodate you. You've missed some business of of the organization in the process, but uh, Linda, will you record the time where uh, Councillor uh, Clark has uh, uh, re-entered the process? Yes. Welcome back, Paul. <laughs> we uh, are uh, on inquiries of administration. Paul, have you got anything that uh, you would like to uh, add to that conversation? I do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, uh, give my compliments to uh, staff and Rob, especially for giving me the updates on the uh, wildfire. Uh, it was quite a concern in this area, as you can imagine and i was sending out those updates as i got them back from you and i got lots of feedback thanking me for doing that so i really appreciate it that's it you're welcome leslie and uh, and kendra were through the weekend to make remotely to make sure that any updates were put onto the md website okay i have uh, inquiries of administration of mine go to the fire as well uh, thank you for all the weekend work uh, that was put into that. Uh, I understand that none of our equipment, however, responded to that emergency. Is that correct? Yes, correct. There were no MD assets requested for the fire. But there are agreements in place that if had they asked, we would have responded. Yes, we would have. Okay. The other one I want to point out is uh, my concern is that this particular fire occurred on a long weekend with explosively dry conditions. None of us were surprised that that fire might have happened. We knew a fire well could have happened. My concern is complacency. 
And the complacency is this, that fire occurred in a very remote place on a mountainside where by natural topography, it took itself uphill. It became self-constrained. A fire somewhere else in our MD on level ground with a good wind would not have behaved that way. And uh, I think we have to realize that while we didn't have a major route uh, blocked by that fire this time, or we didn't have any people or buildings involved in that fire this time, under similar conditions, at a different place, that uh, response to that fire could have become very, very complicated and uh, very dangerous. So uh, uh, this time, uh, I think we did very, very well. I think we should not uh, take our eyes off the issue, though, that a fire in the wrong place on the wrong day is going to uh, ha be very seriously complicated. Paul Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Reeves. So administration will recall before uh, COVID uh, shut the world down uh, that uh, myself and Councillor Kirk were hound dogging getting an emergency evacuation plan uh, worked up. And I know that that was in progress. Uh, I think this may actually just uh, highlight the need for something like that uh, so that there is some sense of certainty. I realize that it's a, a large task, uh, but I think people would um, certainly benefit from having the knowledge of what to do or at least what they expect to be recommended to do. So maybe, Rob, can you just speak to that very briefly? Yep. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. In fact, um, it has been a discussion with the environmental, sorry, with the emergency services committee, and in fact, at the municipal that's for the emergency municipal plan, and that has been discussed. And there is an item that be going forward to council as a budget request that is coming out of that particular emergency municipal plan. So uh, thank budget. you for that. So emergency services has been discussing that now for about six months. Do we expect to see a request for funding in a shorter period? Through the chair, it will come through because we already have a costing for it from our consultant, Montaigne, and that will be part of what you'll see in your budget requests that will be coming forward to you. Okay. It is part of the municipal emergency plan planning call. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, I had one more uh, uh, thing I wanted to add to uh, the fire situation, and uh, uh, that's that uh, uh, we uh, have to understand that our response as an MD to that fire is helpful but limited, and uh, the attack on that fire was immediate, it was uh, sustained, it was robust in the sense of equipment, and demonstrated how lucky we are to be very close to Springbank. So uh, uh, it, it turned out well this time, uh, Rob, and I congratulate our people, both fire departments and, uh, and administration, and uh, forestry and uh, managing that so terrifically well. I wouldn't want my comments to uh, uh, look like I didn't have great trust in my career and my uh, volunteer professional firefighters. Paul Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I guess uh, despite uh, other people's uh, um, response to my questions about the proactivity I still have a concern that uh, that we don't we don't have a enough of a relationship with forestry to know what they're doing uh, to uh, proactively um, mitigate these potential fires that uh, that could be devastating and and I just heard the report in California uh, the big fire there it's uh, extremely dry conditions, uh, high temperatures, uh, they're not going to stop this fire. Uh, and uh, um, and it's just something that uh, maybe uh, we could discuss at emergency services. Uh, and I'll, I'll ask uh, Rob for his advice in that uh, if we uh, 
would have somebody that would have a liaison with the uh, forestry uh, people so that um, we could get uh, reports on what they're doing to uh, mitigate this fuel load that that's that's uh, um, constantly appearing every year and uh, not being diminished by any means. Uh, all we're getting is a bigger fuel load every year, and uh, and then other factors which which uh, I could talk about. Uh, I won't today, but uh, they include uh, um, a a very difficult problem for people to. Uh, mitigate this on their own uh, in their own uh, areas uh, because of uh, our own rules for instance uh, our and uh, and uh, consultation with other groups uh, so uh, it's a it's a, almost an uphill battle for anybody that wants to try and and uh, uh, relieve this concern of uh, all this uh, public land um, that uh, that could go up and so on. so I just I'll give you an example what would have happened if it didn't rain and it didn't snow I think this fire was uh, out of control and uh, would remain would have remained out of control uh, because uh, uh, there was nothing stopping it and uh, and um, uh, the forestry were putting it, all the uh, everything that they could put in on it. Uh, but as I saw uh, on the updates, uh, the every day the fire, the size of the fire was increasing. It went from uh, I think around 250 uh, hectares to 650 hectares before it was <clears throat> uh, determined to be contained. So, oh, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Lisa? Uh, further to that, Paul, and I don't know if it'll make you feel any better, but uh, like I, I do fully support uh, having more measures in place to protect ourselves against forest fires. But uh, with regards to the one on Black Rock Mountain, um, I'd also read that uh, they the fire crews were prescribing uh, fires to backstop the out of control fire. And that's how, part of the reason why the size of the fire became so large. Um, but uh, just to give you a little bit of peace of mind, that a good portion of those hectares were prescribed burns from what I've understood. Through the chair, Councillor Roswell is absolutely correct. They were dropping incendiaries from the helicopters that were setting fires to create a proper perimeter. And it was a backfire so that the fire would not come down if, was, if conditions changed. It would stay up on the scree and then the avalanche shoots and burn itself out. Thank you. I was aware of that. Uh, um, and uh, thank you for that information. The last comment I want to make is I want to congratulate council and administration and the public for getting so much of the fire smart in place as soon as we have, as well as we have. And I note that in one case now we're going back and re-maintaining a fire smart that occurred much earlier. So we are moving in a positive direction where the advantage of making those choices has been extended by the forestry industry and the government of Alberta. They're, They've been a huge help in those programs. But congratulations, Rob, on uh, being proactive and so proactive on those fronts. Good, thank you. Uh, can we move on, folks? Uh, moving on to correspondence, we have six items of correspondence between pages 228 and 246. Do I, I have an receive, motion? I must receive all this information, Mr. Chair. Okay, Paul Ryan has it. Uh, I think your hand's up, uh, Rob. Yeah, just to note, you had mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, Reeve Cooper and the CEO's report, I just made a note in there that staff have returned full-time to the office as of September the 1st. Okay. So we have a full complement working. They're not work I only have two staff that are working remotely for other issues. 
um, but all staff have returned to the office. Okay, thank you. You have a motion. I have a motion. Uh, going to call the question all in favor. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Motion's carried. Motion to go in camera, please. I we don't have a um, a link, Mr. Chair. Please, Leslie, do we have a link? I sent it out to you. You have a link. Well, but just to let you know before you go on camera, um, with Councillor uh, Ryan's comment about the uh, about the McElhaney report, well, and my reply coming, it will come in September. We don't believe we need that item on the closed session now. Perfect. Okay. Still moving on. I have the motion from Lisa calling the question. All in favor to go in camera. Okay. Hey, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure with my system here how I'm going to do it. I know I've done it before, but I might need a little coaching here. Can somebody look at their calendar and see if the in camera is on the uh, team's calendar? It, it is. is not.
hopes that we're still co connected as we had uh, quorum. Okay, I'll, I'll write that. Okay. Uh, any problem with this process, Council? No. Nope. Mm. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Okay, I have it from Paul Ryan. Following the question, all in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.